Hey fellow photographers, what did you photograph today? So today we're pretty much wrapping up our 8x10 super wide 80 millimeter pinhole camera. As you can see, I've already got the pinhole mounted in there and uh, it's pretty much good to go. We will put some finishing touches on this, but as it stands right now, this is a functional camera. So let's talk about how we got there from parts one and two, which you haven't seen those videos. Check out my recent videos. I go over how to cut each of these pieces of wood and how to sort of assemble the the, the box that this camera is. Today we're gonna to be talking about the pinhole itself. Now, the pinhole itself is extremely important because we want a pinhole diameter that is small enough that's going to give us as sharp an image as possible with a pinhole camera. Obviously, it's not going to be as sharp as a lens which focuses light, but by using science, we can actually see that by using a small enough hole to make our image, we get as crisp an image as possible without going so far as to sort of let the artifacts of diffraction kick in and actually make our image more soft. So we're gonna go through some math today. I know a lot of people have trouble following the math. I've actually had a very, very, very in-depth derivation of this calculation. So today we're only gonna go over the actual results from this calculation for this specific camera. But if you're interested in the math, I'll link the, the videos up here. So for this camera, we have our optimal pinhole diameter equation, which just if, to remember is the diameter of the pinhole is equal to the square root of 2.44, which is a constant that we derive from the diameter of airy disks and all that kind of stuff, times lambda, which is the wavelength of light, and times the focal length, all divided by one plus m. Here, m is magnification. Now, I've plugged in the numbers for our specific case here, so we have 2.44, and I'm using here 55 nanometers. This is, uh, sorry, 550 nanometers, which is 0 0.00055 millimeters. All the measurements have to be in the same units. And the reason we're using 550 nanometers is because that's just about the middle of the visible spectrum of light. We've got red over in the 700 range, and we have violets and ultraviolets over at the, the 400 range. So right in the middle is a really good approximation if you know you're gonna be taking pictures of just red things or just blue things, then you can actually put in that wavelength, but it's typical to start with just uh, the middle of the road of the visual spectrum. So we've got that times the wavelength of light times our focal length, which is 80 millimeters, all divided by one plus M. Now magnification, uh, we're actually gonna to set to zero. So this is all gonna be divided by one, that's all gonna go away. The reason that we do magnification to zero is basically we're going to focus this camera for infinity uh, and that way, you know, pinhole images really have almost infinite depth of field. So you can optimize if you're gonna use your pinhole to take macro pictures. But since this is a wide camera, it's usually gonna be used for landscapes and things of that sort. So we're basically focusing to infinity all the time. So magnification goes to zero. You plug all these numbers in your calculator and we get to the optimal pinhole diameter for this focal length is going to be 0.327 millimeters. Now, it's gonna be very difficult to get a pinhole that's exactly that size. And in fact, for this, I ordered my pinhole offline and they usually come in 0.1 millimeter increments. So I actually round down to 0.3 millimeters is the diameter that I chose for this project. I actually made another video, which I'll link here, basically saying that uh, the causes of diffraction are less bad than making a pinhole that is too big. So you wanna err on the side of having a pinhole too small. The effects from diffraction won't be that large, and the only downside is by going uh, with a smaller pinhole diameter, you're gonna have longer exposure times because you're gonna have a higher effective f-stop. So rounding down to 0.3, we have our optimal pinhole size. Now another thing to consider is basically, given our format is a diameter, uh, a pinhole diameter of 0.3, and whatever thickness material we choose to make it out of, is that going to allow us to give the full image area coverage? So that's why we go over here to this calculation, and spoiler alert, it does because, you know, I've checked the math before I made this, but this is something that you wanna consider when you're designing your own camera. And essentially, if this is our sort of pinhole between two very thin pieces of material, and this is sort of our projection onto our film plane, we know that the focal length is 80 millimeters, and you kinda of have to know the diameter of your pinhole and T here, the thickness of the material. So because I ordered my pinhole, uh, online, they actually gave you the specs. It's about, I think it's 0 0.005 inches, which is 0.127 millimeters. So very, very thin material, and that's really important. It's really the thinness of the material that's gonna dictate the majority of how much area of coverage you can get 
with your pinhole. So by using similar triangles, we don't have to use trigonometry, we can, but similar triangles will do the, do the job. Essentially, we have this little tiny triangle up here, and one of this size of the triangle is going to be half the diameter of the pinhole, so that's the bottom side. And then the top side is going to be half of the thickness of the material. So that makes a really tiny triangle up here. And that triangle, because it shares an angle with this larger triangle, which is our projection, we can use similar triangles and we can use this ratio. Half the diameter to half the thickness is equivalent to, is proportional to, this distance x divided by this distance, our focal length. So we know basically three out of the four, so we just solve for the unknown. Obviously the one-halves cancel out, so we have Diameter over thickness is equal to x over 80. We simply cross multiply to get that 80 millimeters times our diameter, which we know is 0.3, is equal to x times the thickness. And again, I said that was about 0.005 inches or 0.127 millimeters. And then we simply solve for x to get that x, this distance here, which in case you're wondering is basically the radius of the circle of coverage is going to be 188.9 millimeters. Now, since this number is larger than the diagonal of our film, which is about 162 millimeters, we have plenty of coverage to cover the entire 8x10 film. All right, so now that we have all the math out of the way, let's go over kind of the last steps to putting all this all together. So we're gonna actually borrow that template that we used last time to figure out where we wanted to drill the large hole in the face of the camera. And we're gonna place that over some uh, little sheet metal there, something very thin but rigid enough that it's gonna, it's gonna hold shape. So I have the same template we used from last episode on a pla uh, plate of sort of sheet metal there, and we're gonna just trace that out. And that's gonna be like sort of an inside plate that we're gonna attach to the inside of the camera. So I've also punched a little hole right in the middle where we're gonna drill for our pinhole. Um, and basically using some, some metal scissors, cut out that piece uh, if you have an angle grinder or anything like that, whatever it takes to cut metal, these, these shears work well as long as you take your time uh, because if you use the shears, then uh, you have a tendency to sort of bend the metal. So just make sure this is as flat as possible. So now that we have that done and cut out, what we're going to do is we're going to drill a small hole. It doesn't have to be as large as that four inch hole because the material is so thin, we're not worried about light getting blocked and all that kind of stuff. So we're going to draw a hole in the middle where our pinhole will go. And while we're here, we're going to also drill four holes in the corner and we're going to use these to screw into the front face of our camera. Now this is a very shiny surface so what we're going to do is we're actually going to spray paint this flat black. Uh, spray paint's pretty easy to use. It doesn't need to be a professional paint job. It's going on the inside of a camera. All it needs to do is be less reflective than shiny metal because again we're worried about those internal reflections ruining our exposures. So we're going to spray paint both sides of the uh, sheet metal black and while we're here we might as well tape off uh, the rest of the camera and paint the inside of uh, the wood camera black as well again just avoiding all internal reflections once we have both of those pieces painted it's as simple as attaching the pinhole to the metal plate just by taking the pinhole and super gluing it making sure it's as center as possible to that hole that we drilled and once we have that done, it's as simple as placing in that sheet of sheet metal and we're going to screw in all four corners just so it's nice and flush against the face of the camera. So that's really all there is to it. It wasn't uh, super complex. In this episode, all we had to do was affix the pinhole, which is right there to this metal sheet, which is nice and rigid. It's nice, it's, it's gonna keep shape. Um, and in the back you see here that we've got the pinhole plate, which I will probably also in the next video will paint most of this black in order to make sure that it's, uh, it's not going to have any internal reflections from there. We've got our four screws in the corner. We'll probably also just paint over these black again. Uh, but now we have a fully functional camera. So this is it. I mean, this is all it took. A couple of pieces of wood, you know, four sides and a, and a front, uh, a pinhole, a nice piece of sheet metal, and then of course, you know, doing some calculations for how big this hole had to be, which we covered in the last episode, as well as making sure we're using the optimal pinhole diameter for this camera. So because this is an 80 millimeter focal length with a pinhole diameter of 0.3 millimeters, uh, we have an effective f-stop of about f-266, which is really close to f-256, which is a power of two. So it should be really easy to calculate exposure values when we meter our scene. And we'll go over that during Worldwide Pinhole Photography Day, 
we're actually gonna take this camera out and photograph with it. So make sure you stay tuned for that. I'm gonna put some finishing touches on this camera, which I'll cover in a future video. We've got the Intrepid 8x10 over here. And since 8x10 lenses can be expensive and the fact that we have these awesome affordable cameras that are now hitting the market, there seems to be a resurgence. So a lot of lens prices are going up. In a couple of other future videos, we're going to make a uh, pinhole for this by mounting it to a lens board. And that way we can get all kinds of interesting focal lengths. We can get really, really telephoto focal lengths, which are some very expensive lenses. So we'll be able to do that in future videos. So a lot more pinhole videos, a lot more 8x10 videos, a lot more film videos coming up. So if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing to this channel, dropping a like. As always, leave comments down below. I try and answer all the comments that have questions. I want to help you guys uh, take your photography to the next level. So until I see you next time in the next video, as always, happy photographing.